As you know, the Tiny Toons reboot cartoon show has returned to TV. And even though it's a pretty decent reboot of the 1990s cartoon, well, while watching, I can't help but feel a little bit nostalgic for the classic show. And of course, with that original show came a slew of video games. I'm irate, I'm gamer, I am the irate gamer, and Tiny Toons video games are invading this review. The Kickstarter for the Irate Gamer Ultimate Collection Blu-ray set is live, and I gotta say you fans have already blown me away because the goal was reached in the first five hours, and we've smashed through those first two stretch goals. This set collects the first six seasons of the Irate Gamer Show, with tons of bonus features and more. Make sure you follow the link in the description to get a Blu-ray set now. Tiny Toons for the NES was released in 1991, and by then, Video game companies really had a good handle on what made a game great, so playing this one delivered nothing but fan service from the cartoon. And I used to love renting this game back in the day because it was a huge surprise to see so many character cameos spread throughout the game. The game's intro had Montana Max, Buster Bunny, the select screen had Shirley the Loon, allowing you to pick Plucky, Dizzy, or Furball as your companion in the game, and then in game, there was characters like Hampton, Concord, nope, nope. Gogo Dodo, Sweetie, but they also had that Arnold Dog guy, which is also a villain. And the icing on this cake is that they even included a bonus level based on that Star Wars parody episode they did. All right, use the force, Buster. So yeah, there are a lot of things to gush about in this game. And I know you're not tuning into the Irate Gamer Show to see me gush about games. You wanna see me tear this thing apart, so Let's tear this thing apart! Just look at Buster Bunny smugly jumping through this game. Who the hell does he think he is? Fuck that guy in those carrots he collects! The downside to Buster here is that all the sidekicks that he can transform into during the game are the very ones that have all the special cool abilities. Plucky can fly through stages, Dizzy can blast through barriers, and Furball climbs walls. And what does Buster do? Well, he does this. And what the hell am I supposed to do with that, you loser? And make sure you pick Buster's sidekick at your own risk because you'll be stuck with them until you clear out all three stages in each level on the map. So it's like when you come to this point here where you could climb the wall to bypass half the stage while the character that you did pick becomes about as useful as turning in a blender. Ugh, what a bona fide grade A turd burger. Now don't get me wrong, this is a cool game, but what could have been even better is giving the player the option of being able to switch out any of these four characters at any time by pushing the select button or something. They could have had their own health meter, and once they died in the game, well, you just move on to the next guy. This would have been an awesome solution to how hard the gameplay gets in this game later on. And look, the Tiny Toons video game was made by Konami, the same company that also made the childhood scarring video game Ninja Turtles for the NES. The one thing they actually did right in this game was giving you the ability to switch out any of the turtles you wanted at any time in this game. And it's a shame they couldn't carry that feature over into this game so you could switch out the Tiny Toons characters anytime you wanted. Ugh, talk about dropping the ball on this one. 30 years later, and I'm still pissed about this. Now, each level in this game is composed of three stages each. You face off against the stage boss Elmira at the end of stage two, and the final level boss at the end of stage three. Now, these Elmira confrontations are frustrating because you have to avoid her long enough for this door to open and finish this stage. But if she catches you, you just don't redo the level. No, no, no! You have to start all the way back at the beginning of stage one. Stage one? You motherfucker. I have to do this shit all over again? I thought this game was for kids. What kind of bullshit is this? But that aside, this is a great game. And of course, why is this game so great? Well, it's probably because they lifted tons of game elements for other popular games. 
Because look at this. This first level here seems awfully close to Super Mario Bros. 3. And the second level seems awfully close to Super Mario Bros. 2. Huh. Look at that. You even jump out of the quicksand the same way. And can we say Donkey Kong, anyone? And also, let's just check out this Arnold Dog character. Because he basically operates like a damn hammer brother from Super Mario Bros. What the hell? Once you see it, you can't unsee it. Ah, my eyes, the goggles, they do nothing! And don't get me started on this level three boss, because he's the hardest mofo in the game since he jumps down from the ceiling and then jumps down below at record speeds. Half the time I end up hurting myself or falling down the hole along with him. Son of a bitch! Oh, I just want to cry tears of fail. <laughs> I hate you. Then level four here takes me so long to get to the top of the stage and reach the final boss that my timer always runs out. Well, shit, my pancake batter. So after releasing Tiny Toons, which wasn't a bad game, I'm just really nitpicking, well, Konami decided to release Tiny Toons 2 Trouble in Wacky Land. And with this sequel, just guess the road they took with the gameplay here. Make another solid action platformer like the first one, or throw a gorilla feces at the wall to see what Rorschach-like paintings materialize from all that dripping poo water. Oh yeah, dripping poo water for the win. And even upon watching the game's intro, I'm super confused here. Because it tells us that a huge amusement park just opened up, and it's time for all the Tiny Toons characters to go and have a good time there. An amusement park? What the fuck happened to Wacky Land? Trouble in Wacky Land! The only trouble I'm having is comprehending why the hell I'm in an amusement park. Time to ride the roller coaster. Fail. Time to do the bumper cars. Fail. Time to ride the train. Oh cool, we finally get to play as Hampton Pig. Yay, fail. Time to visit the fun house. Oh, it's locked. Fail, fail, fail. Time to ride the log ride. All right, well, I guess this is one light between those butt cracks because this is actually pretty fun. But these four amusement park rides makes up the entire game. What in the hell? Look, if I wanted to play a game full of amusement park rides, they already made a game called Adventures in Magic Kingdom, where they give you iconic rides to fight through, like Pirates of the Caribbean, fail, Splash Mountain, fail, Space Mountain, fail, and the Haunted Mansion? Oh, that could be cool, oh, fail. Boy, this level really gives off those Ghosts and Goblins vibes. Yeah, it's just as difficult as well. And of course, when it came to the second Tiny Toons installment, why didn't they make it like the first game? Because that would have been a home run. Instead, they made it like the Adventures in Magic Kingdom, which made no sense at all and made for a terrible game. Oh, but just wait, because things get even crazier with the third installment, Tiny Toons Cartoon Workshop. But does this game even qualify as a video game? Because playing this one makes me feel like Nintendo was just handing out video game quality seals to the same group of video game companies no matter how dumb the game premise was. This game requires the player to piece together tons of sequences and having to sift through multiple confusing screens all just to make one little stop motion cartoon? And the process turns out to be so damn boring. Why did they think I would want to play this game over watching the cartoon show? Because it doesn't. Why me? Yeah, I'm thinking the same damn thing right now. Now you're probably saying, hey, wait a minute, Irie Gamer. What about all those games outside of the NES? What about them? Buster Bus Loose for the Super Nintendo looks amazing. And it looks just like the cartoon at certain points, but the controls are horrible. Most of the time, the game requires you to sprint up the walls, down the walls, all over the place, and you end up killing yourself half the time trying to accomplish this feat. Then you have the game Wacky Sports Challenge. Ah, oh, great, this is just like Trouble in Wacky Land, but with sports. Oh, what cash grab bullshit. Now, if you head on over to the Game Boy, well, we have Bab's Big Break. And, all right, thankfully this is a decent installment because it's pretty much like the first NES game. But this game is obviously superior since you get to play as other characters like Hampton, Shirley the Loon, and Fifi Le Pew? Aw, oh, dude, what? And besides that, 
You can also switch out any of the main three characters anytime you want. Oh, come on. That's why I wanted for the NES game. Come, you asshole. Thanks for raping my childhood yet again. But as for those other Game Boy games like Montana's Movie Madness... Oh, horrible. Buster saves the day? Yeah, right. Buster saves bullshit. This is Candy Quest? Fuck the Candy Quest. Everywhere I walk, I end up falling through the goddamn floor. Ah, you suck! But we do have Buster's Hidden Treasure for the Sega Genesis. This is a fun one, too. Even if the stages do look like they've been lifted directly out of a Sonic the Hedgehog game. Look, I won't tell if you won't, because I just want a decent Tiny Toons game to play. As you can see, well, they come few and far between. Like, say, Trouble in Wacky Land? Aw, oh, fuck this game! <whistles> Good riddance. And that's a wrap!